Hello guys, welcome back to my channel Gamma Die Gamma. So in this video, I wanted to make, uh, I wanted to evaluate an integral that is, that is, you know, that looks quite trivial, but is not so. And I believe it's also featured in a few movies like The Man Who Knew Infinity. But more importantly, it's from Valian's book. Before before doing the integral though, maybe I'll, I shall write the integral down. K of k is integral from 0 to pi over 2 of uh, d theta over square root 1 minus k squared sine squared theta. Okay. And this this is called the ellipt elliptic integral of the first kind. That would be the case if we did not have the upper bound defined. So that's why as whenever the upper bound is pi over 2, it is the complete elliptic integral of the first kind okay that's just the terminology now to do this we need the following lemma the result we need to prove integral from 0 to pi over 2 dx over 1 minus a sine squared x is nothing but pi over 2 times 1 over square root 1 minus a for a less than 1. Otherwise, we have a divergence at 1. Okay, how will we prove this? Well, standard procedure, call this i1. So i1 is that junk there, but we can divide by cosine squared in the numerator and denominator so that we have a secant squared x over secant squared x minus a tan squared x dx and now the simple substitution u is tan x so that we have integral from 0 to infinity du over 1 plus 1 minus a u squared and then there, there has we have the standard substitution the trigonometric substitution tan theta is u times square root 1 minus a secant squared theta d theta is du square root 1 minus a and then i1 is just integral from 0 to pi over 2 secant squared theta over square root 1 minus a secant squared theta d theta yeah i believe yeah i believe that is correct And we get pi over 2, 1 over square root 1 minus a. Because this cancels and we just have a pi over 2 factor there. Okay, that was the lemma. So we've proved the lemma successfully. Now we have to apply it. And applying it is always the hardest thing. To see where we can recall result. So complete elliptic integral of the first kind and now we have to satisfy the condition in this case our a if we want to compare to the form we had before our a is just k squared sine squared theta Is that less than 1? 
Well, we can enforce that for K. We don't know. But sine squared theta is, is going to be less than or equal to 1 on the 0 to pi over 2 interval. Which is fine. We can, we can enforce that because we can say our interval is just this. So yeah, we enforce that condition. And then using the result we have before, this result. In, in, so in case of this term, we can write 2 over pi times this integral. So we have 2 over pi times the outer integral that remains unchanged. And we have the new integral because of the lemma. It should be 1 over 1 minus k squared sine squared theta sine squared phi. That's the new variable we're introducing. d phi d theta. So instead of, let me go back up there. So instead of, instead of this factor where a is k squared, uh, k squared sine squared theta, we're going to replace that with two over pi times this integral. That's what we've done. Inst and in, instead of x, our variable of integration here, because it doesn't matter for definite integrals, is phi. And now what we can do is we can use the uh, the geometric series formula by noting that the term here, the term that's sort of beside the one that's subtracting from the one is less than one because we already, we, en we enforce this condition and then multiplying by a sine squared phi will always keep it less than one in the zero to pi over two interval. So we can just write this as an infinite sum because of the geometric infinite geometric series formula. K to the 2n, sine to the 2n theta, sine to the 2n of phi, d phi d, d, d theta. And then we have 2 over pi. Just interchange the sums and the integrals k to the 2n, pi over 2, pi over 2, sine 2n phi, d phi. Maybe we can move this over to that side because we can separate both the integrals out. Sine 2 to the n theta d theta. And then we can use a result from before and I, I believe I've made a video so I can really state that and probably provide a link in one of the cards. You, you can find this in the four ways to prove the Wallace product formula video, which I don't know why, I got, why it got so many dislikes than I anticipate. But anyways. So that's the formula. Double factorials means you have to, instead of like multiplying by the successive lower number, you jump by two. If you watch that video, it is pretty cl clear. I use the terminology a lot. Now, what we can do is just replace everything. So we have pi over two and a sum from zero to infinity of we have two of those integrals, so we'll have the identity squared. Squared. K to the 2n. And that is, if I write it down explicitly, pi over 2. 1 plus 1 half squared k squared plus 1 half 3 fourth k to the fourth, one half, three by four, five by six, k to the six. And, uh, you know, I should have added the dotted lines, so on. That's, that's it, that's the formula. And we can't do anything more than that. This is the final answer. But wait on, we can make things a little more interesting. We can find a new result. By, say, by saying let k equal i, 
But now you might wonder, you know, the problem here in the condition is our condition is key squared sine squared theta is less than one. Well, we can modify it and say, well, let the complex magnitude of that be less than one. So if you add a complex magnitude correction, because the magnitude of I is one. So if we add a complex magnitude, we can still satisfy this condition. And this is a common practice, you know, for the radius of convergence of geometric series, you just say absolute value of the radius of, is less than one, then it converges. The common ratio is less than one, then it converges. And in the, when you move to the complex plane, you just absolute value it. So that it, this is a common practice. I will not get into, get into the gory details of it in this video, but just know it is a common practice. So when I do that, I have one minus one half squared plus one half three fourths squared minus one half three fourth five six and so on. That's what happens when I plug in directly into the formula we obtained here. And that all that equals two over pi square root of one plus sine squared theta. This looks like you, you can do it, but it's not that trivial, I'll say that. But we can still solve this as long as we have the plus sine squared theta. That's because I'll show you if we write sine theta is x, t theta cos theta is dx. If we call that i, we have 2 over pi integral 0 to 1 dx of square root 1 minus x squared square root 1 plus x squared and now we can use the difference of squares identity to simplify this to square root 1 minus x to the fourth and now if we set x to the fourth as y we shall get and i'm going to skip some steps here you can check this on your own and this looks familiar because this is just the beta function which i will remind you is zero to one u to the x minus one one minus u to the y minus one du so that means our result here is just one over two pi beta of one fourth comma one half which we can you know use the the beta in terms of gamma formula to get gamma of one fourth times gamma of one half over gamma of one fourth plus one half which just becomes uh, we can use some well-known formulas square root pi and we can use the reflection formula and then plug in one fourth in there because that's what we have essentially because this denominator is just gamma of 3 fourth so that is pi times root 2 you can check that just plug in so i is just one half square root pi gamma squared of one fourth over square root two pi which finally becomes gamma squared one fourth over square root of two pi whole cube and of course you can always find the value of gamma of one fourth because we know gamma of one half and there's the duplication formula that i proved uh, i don't know like two or three years ago i think it's been it was, it was definitely during covid i know that for sure so yeah watch all of those videos if you haven't and you're new to my channel otherwise
if you know them good for you but that that these are some interesting results i wanted to show you and this is a really interesting integral looks kind of trivial if you think about it because it's just sign and it's just a square root but it's not really because integration is is quite complicated especially if you have complicated fractions like that it's for an arbit arbitrary and indefinite bounds of integration it, it really is just the incomplete not complete this time incomplete elliptic uh, integral function so yeah there we go please like share, and subscribe to my channel guys recommend your friends in the meantime stay tuned be safe and peace out thank you for watching